fan says he looks like the baby. You guys decide. Hey, that looks good. Where'd you move here from? Dumbsville? Yo, I hit the jewel, I got some goals. I sold a little weed, but I could never sell my soul. When I'm in LA, you find me all in little soul. Come up, I'll go in my ramen, I'ma need another bowl. Let's go. Hi! I'm Emmy Sakai from YouTube channel, Emmy Sakai. If you can think of any more emo pickup lines, put them down in the comments below because I don't know every emo quote in the world, which is a shame because you think I would because I'm emo Jesus. Do you understand what your mouth has just stated? What your unholy mouth hole has just let loose? What your lip flaps have just breathed into existence? You claim to be Emo Jesus. Do you understand who owns this title? Has your ignorance blinded your will for common sense? Do you think you can rar ubu xd your way out of this? Who do you take me for, a sim? If I ask you about American football and modern day Baseball. What will you say then? I will have you know that I listen to Blady and Da Baby. Do you not understand who I am? You fool! You absolute buffoon! You dare come into my house and spill coffee grounds in my Keurig? <laughs> No matter then, it seems your ignorance was a blessing in disguise. My will to reclaim my own title has only increased my power level. I am the real emo Jesus, and the anger of God will smite you down. I didn't start listening to Lil Peep for nothing, and now it's time for you to face your sins. The consequences of your blasphemy will be great. Nano machine, son. Your punishment will be painful and agonizing. I am the angel of death. You are but a typical blasphemer. All cock and no cum. Your death will be great for the economy. You are but an imposter <laughs> and you're looking quite sus. And I've called an emergency meeting. Five words for your punishment. You look like Ramona Flowers. <laughs> Okay, but uh, Scott Pilgrim is quite good. I mean, you like Scott Pilgrim, right, Mark? It's okay, I guess. Brian Lee O'Malley's earlier work, Lost at Sea, was a bit too teenage drama for my taste. But when Scott Pilgrim came out in 04, I think he really came into his own, commercially and artistically. And I know what you're thinking. A good movie reviewed on this channel? Yeah, well, I can't review bad movies all the time. I need a breather every once in a while. And this is my second favorite film of all time. And to me, it's very interesting how Scott Pilgrim works where films like Emo the Musical and Fred the Movie don't work. Now, I'm gonna assume that you have seen the movie and read the books, and if you haven't, there is something deeply wrong with you. You can buy the books on Amazon, you can watch the movie on Netflix, look at all of these books I bought and that I'm showing you so I can write them off on my taxes. This will be primarily on the film. I'll cover the books a little bit, but I really want this video to be on the movie itself. So without further unfunny dialogue from me, let's start with the care- at its heart, Scott Pilgrim is a very character-driven story. So in order to make it compelling, you gotta have good characters. Now, I'm gonna be honest. A lot of times when I watch a movie, especially a live-action one, even if the characters are fantastic, I'll often forget their names. So it really says something when in Scott Pilgrim, I remember the first and last names of almost every single major character. And even the minor characters. And I think it's more than just they have goofy names like Ramona Flowers and Scott Pilgrim. And, uh, Young Neil. I'm Neil. It's also that each character is kind of semi-symbolic. The characters all have something to represent and bounce off of the main character himself. Speaking of the main character, Scott Pilgrim himself is an extremely great character. He doesn't do uh, great things, but when it comes to the pure quality of him as a character, it's fantastic. He's also ironically the most divisive character in the entire series. People call him an unlikable dork who cheats 
cheats on his girlfriends. Even though that's kind of the entire point? Let me explain. Unlike Emo the Musical, where the main character is a complete douchebag, and is so irritating and pretentious that you can't stand him for more than five seconds, Scott is enjoyable enough. He's dorky and awkward, and I sympathize with that. But he also cheats Honor. on his girlfriend, is a total bum, and is a total dumbass. Here's the thing, though. He has to confront that. When people call Scott Pilgrim an unlikable douche, and say things like, oh, he dates knives just so he can get over his previous girlfriend, I have to ask the question, did they not watch the movie? He's clearly reprimanded for being an asshole, and he has to deal with that. Just, just another evil ex waiting to happen. It takes a strong man to deny what's in front of him. Now, to give credit, the books do handle this better. They dive a lot deeper into the self-reflective and the existential, but the film does get a little bit of leniency for being written before the final book was completed and had to be pieced together using Brian Lee O'Malley's notes. And I actually like the ending of the film, which I'll get to later. The film also does a good job of putting you in the mindset of Scott. Obviously, you don't agree with him, but you understand him. And through the use of strong side characters, you understand how this affects other people and how other people affect him, and furthermore allows the audience to wonder how good of a character is Scott. In other words, the audience is just as much a character as Scott is. Calling Scott a bad character is incredibly stupid, but he is flawed and has to work through those flaws. He goes through a full character arc and has to change himself and learn accordingly. And for those reasons, I think Scott is a strong main character. Dorky enough to be enjoyable, shitty enough to, to be engaging. It's kind of like Walter White. He does a lot of bad things, but you kind of understand why, you feel me? Okay. And bother me, I'm cooking for you for the KBPS of meth. And it's also the uh, entire point. Answer Jesse, really? He isn't real. Signs will bring me my presence. What? Where's my. Ah. <laughs> Let's dive into the side characters. And boy, does Scott Pilgrim have some really good ones. This is the number one hottest Sonic the Hedgehog female character. Now, once again, the books do dive deeper into the characters and even have an entire extra character. But once again, the film gets leniency by having to put six books into one movie. Anyways, let's begin with my wife. Ramona Flowers is the, the e-girl character. She's the character who ruined a whole generation of women. And she too is a very good character. The chemistry between her and Scott is very funny. Bread makes you fat. Bread makes you fat? <laughs> And she is played amazingly by Mary Elizabeth Winstead, who looks like the baby. And let's just say, I would love to marry that Elizabeth Winstead, if you know what I mean. Why am I allowed to say words on this platform? If only we could see her take wing. I do think she's a better character in the books, though. In the film, she's kind of a grumpy biatch, which I guess kind of makes sense. In the film, she's a character who is jaded by all the exes she dated, which leads to her being a more depressed character. I do think this works in the movie's case and plays off of Scott's awkwardness really well, and proves that, just like Scott, Ramona has flaws of her own. She is, however, in the books, a more bubbly character, and not only is she a more fleshed-out, three-dimensional character, and less of the Hollywood Edge girl, but her said bubbliness also bounces off of Scott's man-childness more, and you understand better why Scott likes her in the first place. Check out the GTX 180, it's a proper fucking card, it'll give you graphics. Once again, the film version isn't bad, just different. She's still a very strong and an engaging character, even if the book version is better. And a lot of this is because she just, in general, just bounces off of Scott so well. This relationship between this dorky, awkward Michael Sarah motherfucker and the much more sarcastic and attitude-filled Ramona is very cute and engaging. It's a far cry from Emo the Musical, where the main character's chemistry was basically dog shit. Honestly, I I've seen better romance in fucking Metro Last Light. Scott Pilgrim, on the other hand, has very good chemistry, with well-defined and Engaging characters, which is how it fucking should be. <sighs> Scott, I think you're the nicest guy I've ever dated. <laughs> And of course, the other side characters are just as great. Now, of course, I'd be here all day if I kept going on, so I'll try to make this brief. Like I said earlier, all of these characters are affected by Scott. Either that, or they directly affect Scott. You have this overarching plot with these seven evil exes, and yes, that is indeed the plot that's on the back of the box. But you also have other interwoven characters and arcs. Knives Chow is an innocent high school girl that's also Scott's rebound, and he really fucks her over throughout the story. Kim Pines is a character Scott already affected in the past, and Scott has to learn to reconcile that. Envy Adams, in contrast, is a character who heavily damaged Scott. I can't say he didn't have it coming to him. He literally dated Brie Larson, who is the devil. Hello? Hey, Brie. 
Once again, you have all of these separate subplots running in parallel with the overarching story. But never does the film feel overly crowded, nor do they feel pointless. Emo the Musical has an entire gay subplot that feels fucking pointless. Gay. Scott Pilgrim on the complete opposite end has an entire gay character who's not only entertaining in his own right, but also helps motivate Scott and push him out the door a little bit, while also being an example of someone else who views him as a pathetic man-child. There are so many characters in Scott Pilgrim, and it's amazing that all of them work. The only character I'd say doesn't work as well as Scott's sister. She does have a ha-ha funny moments in the film and books, but she really just feels like that one character who doesn't contribute a whole lot, save for the occasional monologue about how Scott needs to grow up, which could be handled just as well with other characters. And if you disagree with me, let me just say, I have Brian Lee O'Malley on my side. That's right, fuck you, Anna Kendrick, for starring in a movie. All jokes aside, though, this is one incredible cast of characters, but I've ragged on about them for way too long at this point. Let's jump into the boobies. I wasn't entirely sure whether to put style or story here, so fuck it, I'll put both. Uh, uh, Dumbsville? Yes, Mark? Why are there copies of the Life is Strange comic all over the floor? Do you, do you, do you have a dog? A little chai or something? <laughs> No, Mark. Is that, is that a re-encode? Yes, it is! Now, Scott Pilgrim the movie has a very straightforward story, and like I said, it's very character-driven, which I just spent the first how many minutes talking about, and in all honesty, there's not really a whole lot plot-wise that makes Scott Pilgrim amazing. Yes, there are amazing characters, but when it comes to the plot itself, it's very simple. There's no massive twists, no big reveal. If we're talking basic plot, it's very straightforward, but honestly, I don't think simplicity is bad, especially in this movie's case. This film, plot-wise, does what it needs to do. It has a clear end goal, a clear purpose, with interesting characters, and doesn't overbear you with 15 million plot twists. Please. That's why yo mama dead. The entire plot is basically Scott gets e-girl GF, <laughs> fights seven evil exes, and wins her heart. Now, of course I am, but my point is that the story is exactly what it needs to be. It provides a foundation for the characters to give the deeper meaning. What I think also elevates the story is the style of it. There's often a debate of which is actually more important, the story or the storyteller. And I think Scott Pilgrim is a perfect example of the latter. Young Nindu, shall this film has a very simple, straightforward story, and yet tells it spectacularly. The visual style is absolutely insane. Like, look at this fucking shit. This shit is crazy. Scott Pilgrim has a very, uh... GAMER ATTITUDE! Look, it, it was 2010, alright? This was something directly adapted from the books. The books had a lot of references to gaming and gaming culture, simply because Brian Lee O'Malley himself is an epic game or Alright, we're boning. As a result, gaming culture is very much part of this film's identity. The fights are stylized after fighting games, Zelda music is literally used in the movie and even name-dropped at one point. Zelda... Gaming. <laughs> Scott Pilgrim has an alt-rock band called Sex, Sex bob -omb. If this movie came out today, he would be, uh, the baby. And yet, none of it distracts from the actual story of the movie. Unlike Ready Player One, whose entire identity is remember this gaming thing, remember this 80s thing, every reference in Scott Pilgrim never distracts from the overall story. Once again, to bring up Emo the Musical again, there's a scene where characters name drop YouTube, and I, I wanted to kill myself. Oh, still, I saw this on YouTube. Scott Pilgrim, though, when he grabs an extra life, I gotta say, that was based and red pill. I also gotta say, the humor in this movie is great. Edgar Wright is the master of visual comedy and timing. The jokes are not only over the top, but also fit right in with the universe. The vegan police, for example, is fucking hysterical. There are very few jokes that don't land in this movie, and a lot of them fit right in with my own surreal sense of humor. Is Scott here? Uh, you know what? He just left. Now, I have said earlier that the overall story isn't as deep as the books, which a lot of people view as a bad thing, but personally, I think the simplicity actually adds to the movie. Now, first of all, a lot of this was due to a production issue. As stated earlier, the books weren't completed when the script was being written, so I'm willing to give a little bit of leniency. But I personally also love the simpler ending, and think the movie is just as good as the books for a very different reason. Call me simple-minded, but I love over-the-top anime bullshit. 
bullshit. And Scott Pilgrim's ending is over the top anime bullshit. It's kind of like how I personally consider Metal Gear Rising to be just as good as the rest of the series. Is it a deep postmodern deconstruction like Metal Gear Solid 2? Hell fucking no. But does it have cyborg ninjas talking about memes in the war economy? Patriots, they knew war was good for the economy. Four years later, their legacy lingers on. The memes. Hell yes. Doctor, turn off my pain inhibitors. Hmm. Today, I will let her rip painless. From the characters, to the style, to the comedy, everything in this movie oozes with charm. Scott Pilgrim may not be perfect, but what it gets right, it nails on the head, and rightfully deserves a spot in my personal top five. It's a shame this movie bombed at the box office, but this is a very niche movie, and came out the same weekend as The Expendables. And furthermore, the world just wasn't ready for this movie yet. Scott Pilgrim, both the books and the movie, are extremely ahead of their time, and in my opinion, are better now than they were back then. Yeah, so some of the references may be a little dated, but for the most part, everything is razor sharp, and the themes and humor resonate now more than ever. This is especially apparent when you consider the fact that I've covered two Scott Pilgrim ripoffs on this channel, so take that for what you will. But what's absolutely unforgivable is that Alpha and Omega did better at the box office than Scott Pilgrim. I hope you all fucking suffer for this. Thankfully, the film is coming back to theaters on April 30th, so hopefully the film gets the second chance it deserves. If the pandemic doesn't fuck it over, that is. And hopefully we get to see Ramona Flowers' Mommy Milkers in 4K! Hey, Mark! <laughs> this is for hating on Disaster Movie, you fucking b- Yeah. You punched me in the boob! Beast. <laughs>